as you grow your practice, one of the things that you'll need are some good systems in place that will help you in automating your practice and making sure everything runs smoothly. Therapy Notes is the number one provider of electronic health record systems for mental health providers. Therapy Notes has everything you need to manage patient records, schedule appointments, create rich documentation, and bill insurance right at your fingertips. Their streamlined software is accessible wherever and whenever you need it. So go check them out today, therapynotes.com. And if you use the coupon code GORDON, just G-O-R-D-O-N, you can get your first two months free. So check them out today, therapynotes.com. This is the Practice of Therapy podcast with Gordon Brewer, helping you to navigate your private practice journey. This is session number 130 of the Practice of Therapy podcast. Hello, folks. I'm Gordon Brewer. Glad you've joined us for the podcast. I hope you're having a good week or weekend whenever you might be listening to this. I know as this episode's coming out, we will have just come off of the Memorial Day weekend, um, which uh, for those of us here in the United States is kind of the unofficial kickoff to summer. And um, yeah, what a strange year to begin the summer. Uh, and uh, hopefully we're starting to kind of get out of the woods with the whole COVID thing, but we really don't know, do we? Um, and I think there's a lot of us that are just kind of wanting to proceed with caution and not to be too quick about it and take things slow. And so, um, yeah, so it's been a, been a weird year. So, um, but I hope you're doing well. hope you're staying healthy. I know for my practice, one of the things that I'll mention is that I noticed that when we, when the whole COVID-19 kind of lockdown started beginning, um, really things really slowed down in my practice. And I was really kind of worried at that time, you know, as, okay, are people just going to start, stop seeing us, even though we're doing uh, virtual um, sessions in terms of doing, we made the switch to telehealth and doing online sessions pretty quickly and was able to get the word out about that to our clients. And fortunately, things have not dropped off that much. We hit a dip for a couple of weeks there where we really didn't see that many clients. But after that, it just really kind of picked back up. And, you know, our May so far has been um, back to normal, if you would like, if you could call it that. In fact, we've probably even seen more clients than we normally have. Uh, and I think it's just because people have been, uh, clients have been just real, uh, good about embracing, uh, telehealth and doing that. And, um, just also seeing an influx of, of clients that are just really struggling with things that, uh, uh, they hadn't re- really struggled with before. And I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that you're probably seeing that in your practice as well. But, um, yeah, it's been a strange time, strange season. Um, but we're making it through and I hope you're doing well and staying healthy. I'm looking forward to you hearing from my guests today. Uh, this is, uh, actually guests, plural, um, James Marlin and his, his wife, Lorena Marlin join me for the episode today. And James is the person behind, um, move forward virtual assistance. And um, they are a company that do nothing but provide virtual assistance um, for uh, mental health practitioners. And so he's going to be talking some more about some of the things that you can be doing with some of the downtime we might be having. Although, like I said earlier, things are starting to pick up, at least from my perspective, but just really about um, thinking about the the benefit of outsourcing and really thinking about um, scaling your practice by being able to outsource. And so we're going to have a conversation about all of that and really to also just talk about some of the, the things that people tend to think about hiring somebody for their practice to do things that you might be doing yourself. And I think I know for me, that was a huge move when I started doing those 
started outsourcing some things. But before we get to James and Lorena, I um, wanted to let you know, and I mentioned this last week in last week's podcast, is that I've got a new version of the Session Note Helper now ready. And uh, as, I, as I said in the email I sent uh, to the folks that have already started using the Session Note Helper and have purchased the templates and the tutorials and that sort of thing, it's kind of like what was old is now new again. And so uh, one of the things that happened with the Session Note Helper is that I had hired a, a developer to create an app script to make everything work on the back end. And it, Session Note Helper uses the Google Forms and along with Google Docs, in order to create a session note by just filling out a Google form where you check off different check boxes to tell what you did in the session, and then it creates a narrative from that. And it all works through the beauty of a, something called an app script. Um, and as I like to say, I'm a tech maven, so I know just enough to be dangerous. I'm not a programmer or anything like that. And so if it gets too technical, I'm in over my head. But anyway, um, one of the things that we ran into with the earlier version of the Session Note Helper was is that the form publisher add-on, which I had been using, we couldn't get a BAA from Form Publisher. So Form Publisher is a third-party app that you use within Google G Suites. And that technically really kept it from being fully HIPAA compliant. Um, so found out recently that the Form Publisher now has the BAA uh, available so that you can now make this system that I put together fully HIPAA compliant without having to use the app script that we were using before, um, which also was HIPAA compliant. It just worked in a different way. But some people were running into problems with it and just wasn't working exactly right. So anyway, the Session Note Helper is there. I want you to maybe take a look at that, and you can just go to sessionnotehelper.com to find that. And the thing about the Session Note Helper is that it does not replace an electronic health records uh, system like Therapy Notes. Uh, how I use it in my practice, I use it in conjunction with Therapy Notes. Um, but um, yeah, so it's not designed to replace anything like that. So I just want to kind of say that on the front end. But anyway, I invite you to check it out and learn about that. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm noticing that a lot of people are starting to get that. And so it seems to be working well for people. And also just some conversation about it in our private Facebook group called G Suite for Therapists, which again, I'll invite you to check out that Facebook group that's that's there where we're just talking about using all the tools of Google G Suite. So um, anyway, enough about that. So without further ado, I want to get to um, James and Lorena Marlin from Move Forward Virtual Assistants and our conversation about using uh, virtual assistants and also outsourcing in your private practice. Hello, everyone, and welcome again to the podcast. And I'm happy to have with me um, somebody that's been on the podcast before, James Marlett, and he's actually got his better half with him here. For Is that sure. fair to say? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Lorinda, uh, Lorinda, James' wife, <laughs> is here with us as well. And we're going to be talking uh, some more just about using virtual assistants during uh these strange times that we find ourselves in. Mm. And hopefully by the time this comes out, we'll be, um, uh, when this episode comes out, we'll be kind of on the tail end of this, hopefully. But uh, James and Lorinda, so glad you're here. Thanks, Gordon. Uh, really happy to be here. I really appreciate the work you and the other podcasters and community leaders have been doing during this time. I know I've listened to some really awesome podcasts that have helped me. The one on John Clark, right? Mm -hmm. Just yeah. recently was amazing. Yeah. Um, I think I've listened to it like three times <laughs> okay. just, just uh, to um, just to re-energize myself. Um, but wow, what a, what a couple weeks we've been going through yeah. where everything sort of changed. And 
Uh, in, in our business here, we do virtual assistants and Lorinda's a virtual assistant. And for several weeks, we were wondering, what are we going to do? Because people weren't calling. Everybody was switching to virtual healthcare. So there wasn't uh, mm -hmm. virtual te um, therapies, therapy sessions. So we were kind of scrambling, how, where does a virtual assistant fit in this role? Or even you could apply these ideas for anybody who has some extra time, not necessarily a virtual assistant, but we were thinking about it in the virtual assistant role. What do we do during this time to help our, uh, our clients and uh, reach out to their communities and help with them? So that's where this sort of idea was born from. I've listened right. to a lot of podcasts and gotten some ideas, and this is the, the angle of how do you apply some of that extra time your staff has to help you generate some revenue. Right, right. Yeah. And I think it's, uh, you know, I think uh, the theme um, that has certainly been here all along is that we've had to just change horses in the middle of the stream, mm -hmm. so to speak, and just really having to be flexible and creative. And I think there's a lot of creativity that is coming out with all of this. So, yeah. So what maybe a, maybe a place to start for those that don't know James and know about uh, his company. Um, <laughs> talk, tell us a little bit about what you all do. And um, just for those that maybe didn't get to hear you before, but, and we'll sure. have links to the other, other the episode. Other side, yep. Yeah. So, so yeah, yeah, we're a virtual assistant company only for uh, mental health practice practitioners. So that's therapists, psychologists, some uh, nurse practitioners and some other specialty therapy um, sites. We've been in business for a uh, little more than a year and a half now, and we love what we do. We help private practice owners achieve more, um, like worry less, avoid the burnout stuff, and then just focus on what they do best. Focus on what either earns them money or grow in their business. And we take away uh, some of those tasks. You delegate them to us and uh, our superstar virtual assistants, uh, mm -hmm. take, take care, take care of that end. So you can do what you do best. Right. Right. And it's interesting because, uh, yesterday in my focus group, my mastermind group, uh, I'd switch back and forth between the names, but, <laughs> um, any, anyway, I like the focus group better. That just sounds, mm -hmm. um, maybe a little, um, little softer. Uh, I digress. Anyway, yesterday in our focus group, we were talking about the importance of beginning to outsource a lot mm -hmm. of the things that we, uh, we do. Um, I know in, in my particular, in the particular group I had yesterday, I had one therapist that was really at that place where she was just do it, trying to do it all. Right. And she was really feeling burned out and she's got a thriving practice, but her, her practice was suffering because she didn't really uh, outsource the things that outsource mm -hmm. the things that she needed to outsource. So um, yeah. So what, one of the things that I think um, you and I were talking about James and Lorinda before we, before we started recording was just um being able to stay connected with your clients. And I think one of the things that is a yeah. fear for a lot of people when they hire a virtual assistant is that they're afraid that, that they're going to somehow or another change the dynamic they have with their clients, but probably quite the opposite is true. I would say so. I think a lot of like my job is just connecting the clients with the therapists and it's, you know, passing along messages or just getting them in contact one-on-one -on -one with their therapist. So, and you can do that uh, normally a little quicker or maybe much quicker than the therapists themselves, because if they're in session all the time yeah. or they, they get out of a session and then make a phone call in between. Oh, I got a voicemail. I got to run off the session yeah. or get lunch or whatever. Then, then they come back and then they miss the call. You're able to capture those. Well, I think a lot of the clients too, like sometimes if it's a new client and they're calling in, they're like, Oh wow, I actually got a live person. Mm -hmm. Like they mm -hmm. appreciate that fact. Yeah. 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 So um, maybe tell a little bit about, um, kind of your process and, and maybe some of the, for lack of a better term, uh, some of the stories about the differences it's made for some of the therapists that you guys work with. 
Well, I mean, I think I had one therapist when I started, like the practice was, it was a thriving practice, but then it was like in the first week that I started, it was like, she ended up growing, like, and having like her busiest week ever, like 16 calls. And, you know, like out of those, there was probably about four or five that we scheduled um, that were new clients to her practice. Whereas if I hadn't been there, I don't know if she would have gotten all of those scheduled. Yeah. She, I like that. I like getting that email. <laughs> oh, we had our busiest week ever. Let's yeah. do it again. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, let's yeah. keep up the good parking, the momentum. Right. You know? and, right. And I've had other, other similar stories where people, they, they, um, you know, they're, they're, they, they know what they're doing. They know how to do the therapy. They're, they're growing, but there is a point where you either have to make a decision Am I going to work till seven o'clock at night? Am I going to rush around uh, making these phone calls or am I going to ignore some of these phone calls? You got, mm-hmm. once you get to a point, you're going to have to make a decision. Um, what do you do? And uh, we've gotten some, um, some good. If I, if I, if I knew you were going to do this, I'd go to my testimonial page mm-hmm. on uh, our page and just pull up, pull up uh the most recent one testimonials um uh we were matched with the the best va caitlin and she schedules clients answers phone calls responds to emails organizes and keeps track of the intake log keeps our therapist seeing clients and has the practice running smoothly our VA is always on our A game in order that we can stay in sessions. I'm so grateful for having found this wonderful VA through Move Forward Virtual Assistance. If we didn't have our VA on our team, we wouldn't be half the practice we are today. That is yeah. amazing. Yeah. I just love reading that. That's uh, yeah. from Traveling Light uh, Counseling, one yeah. of our um, clients. It's just uh, just makes my my heart glad when I hear yeah, those yeah. things and how we're uh, helping other people be successful. Right, right. Yeah. So what, one of the things I know that you had been thinking about, James, through through this whole uh, uh, kind of weird time we're in. Um, you know, I think most of us, as I said on an earlier podcast, uh, I think we're kind of past the adrenaline rush of it right. all, and uh, we're really just kind of settling in and maybe getting a little weary of it. And we're trying to figure out how to best use our time mm-hmm. and how the, the role that virtual assistants can play in that in terms of staying connected with clients and other things. You want to talk some more about that in terms of uh, the things that sure. you were thinking about? Sure. So, so just to set it up, uh, do you, uh, do you play chess at all, Gordon, or do you know of the game? chess? Yes. Yes. Yeah, uh-huh. You know, chess, yeah. right? Yeah. And uh, there's these, uh, uh, when I was younger, I used to like reading these books and now you can do it online. Uh, There were chess puzzles where, you know, the pieces have not changed. Their moves haven't changed. It's just where they are on the board have changed. Mm -hmm. And then they say, hey, you need to win in three moves or you need to do this action um, with the situation that you're given. And right now we've all been given a situation, Mm -hmm. right? Like we've Mm -hmm. all been given a puzzle to figure out the pieces uh, might be different for you on your board, but we still, a lot is still the same in the game. You know, the pieces still move the same. Well, in our, in, in our current, where we're living in our situation, we still have clients to see, like things haven't changed. We still have clients to see. We still have phone calls to make. We still have insurance uh, issues to figure out uh, marketing to do podcasts to do social media to do web page things like just the pieces have moved around. Actually, I think they got thrown up in the air and they landed yeah. on the board somewhere. And you're just right. kind of trying to figure out how do we, how do we play this game now that everything has been moved around on us. And mm-hmm. I think it's good to remember that a lot has, even though a lot has changed, a lot hasn't changed. We're, you're still a therapist. You're still running a business. It's just how, how you do it now has changed. You got to figure out that puzzle. So one of the things um, we've kind of figured out, and a lot of this is I've learned through listening to the, the, the virtual assistants as they've come to me and say, Hey, we're doing this in our practice. I listen to podcasts. Um, These are some of the things that have been working for other practices. And one was connecting with their current clients. Many of them um, when, when we first started, 
switching over to teletherapy, lots of work was done to make sure that the current clients stayed coming to their sessions because mm-hmm. the new clients were not coming in. There was just a lot of, nobody knew what to do. So it, they, mm-hmm. it dropped off. So the VAs have spent a lot of time connecting with their current clients, sending letters, checking emails, calling them, making sure they got it, or even just calling them and saying, you know, you missed your session. Do you need to talk? Like all those types of connection things to keep the current clients coming in because new clients, while they're starting to come back, they, they're not, we're not back to where we were before. Yes, yes. I, and I think, too, people are having uh, clients, especially, um, you know, that maybe aren't as familiar with the technology and just For sure. doing, doing all of this online stuff. It's just new to them and they feel kind of intimidated by it and um, that that sort of thing. And so I think there's a great opportunity to kind of reassure people that, you um, that they can do it and that it's, it's really not that difficult. Um, what, are, what are some of the things you've done, Lorinda, to help out to keep people connected? Well, I think like you said, like sending out emails, um, you know, like there's uh, making phone calls um, to different referral places or just, you know, just reminding them of their appointments or if they did miss it, you know, I've called to reschedule clients and people touch have, base with them. People have called you like right before their session too, right? Oh, well, yeah, because of the technology, yeah. like you mentioned, Gordon, some of the clients aren't mm-hmm. as technology savvy. And so like I've had clients call while their session's going on <laughs> saying, I can't get into this link. You know, how do I get into this link? Right. Um, mm-hmm. And then connecting to the therapist and, and, you know, whether that's texting the therapist and saying, Hey, they're there, they're just having trouble getting in. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like playing the middle person for them. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And I think that's one of the things that, um, uh, one of the big things that I think a virtual assistant or any assistant can do in your practice is that they can be the kind of the behind the scenes troubleshooter um, with, you know, you know, just help with, like um, in my practice, for example, is just making sure that we're um, the benefits are checked for insurance and oh, that yeah. sort of thing. And uh, all of those things are things that somebody else can do besides the therapist. That's really um, not a great use of our time, especially as we get get busy and get full. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So what were some of the other things that had been on your mind so, during this uh, time, James? One of the things that's worked for several practices and, and most of the ones in our group um, tried it and have had success with it is uh, continue to build relationships with referral sources, uh, letting them know that they do teletherapy and how what the platform they use or how to get connected with it, giving them their their therapist list, their provider list, their specialties. They were connecting, um, contacting uh, hospitals, of course, PCP offices, but even places you might not think of like schools or churches or colleges, things where you might get referrals once in a while, but now with everything kind of shut down, they were developing relationships with these referral sources and then getting some some referrals back in. So it ta- it does take time. Uh, Lorinda has, uh, Lorinda was ta- was talking, well, maybe I should let her but tell her, but uh, you were saying how it was hard in the beginning, but the more you call, the more. Well, the- yeah, I mean, it's always hard to call um, places and you don't want to sound like a salesperson, but mm-hmm. you do want to offer, you know, you want to make a connection and let them know that you're available for services um, just to help as a resource. So mm-hmm. once we got, once I was able to get past, you know, finding out who I needed to talk to. Finding was, the right person yeah, it was like, sometimes especially, the hard. Yeah, like the hospitals were the hardest part was getting, you know, figuring out which departments. And that's usually like the social. Social workers. Social yeah. workers or their outsource referral, um, outside referral sort resources. Um, doctor's offices were a little bit easier to talk to because they're smaller and there's only like one or two people that would. Um, no, they, there was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Know how to talk. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's um, yeah, it's the the. I think the big thing is is that um, 
one one way in which I think virtual assistants always pay off for people is that um, they don't lose potential clients because mm-hmm. the sooner you can get back with somebody, the sooner you can make that contact. That's who people are usually going to go with. Um, and it's also just making sure you're, you're creating a good fit for, for you and your practice in terms of, uh, of being a, the, the client being a good fit for the therapist and the therapist being a good fit for the client. Um, yeah. You know, what uh, I've, I know I've talked about this before, but if you're the owner and you answer the phones all the time, they're always going to want you. Right. <laughs> and right. and so if, uh, if you have somebody sort of in between, they can direct, you know, direct them to the, to the right person. And also, I, I've I've heard of this several times where the the owner says I'm full, but then they'll answer the phone and take that one more right. client <laughs> right. because and uh, the virtual assistant does get them to the right person, mm-hmm. um, and and the owner doesn't even know. So I mean, they know right. that they're scheduled, but they they don't have that right heartstring pulled. Right. Um, an, another idea uh, was um, providing value for your community and offering some. Uh, connection groups for teachers, business owners, and the frontline staff. I mean, mm-hmm. I know that's been out there before, but the virtual assistant can help organize those things, promote them, uh, mm-hmm. keep a tracking list. Um, you've mm-hmm. you've had people, Lorinda, you've on the podcast <laughs> they can't see me point right. Uh, <laughs> I pointed yeah. to Lorinda, but no, yeah, you've had, you've had people do that, right? Yeah, I mean, one of my practices really ran with this idea and really wanted to help the community, and so they developed a whole program devoted just for um, this type of just for COVID nineteen for the frontline people, um, and that was part of like me calling and and getting the word out. Um, so I kind of was able to partner, like your virtual assistant can partner with the therapists and help, um, you know, get the word out that they're available for the uh, mm-hmm. the community. Right, right. We did something similar in my practice um, and probably um, could have maybe, and maybe we still can communicate it a little bit more. But uh, my sense is, is that as we kind of have gotten more towards the middle of all of this, the, as we said earlier, kind of the adrenaline of it all is mm-hmm. kind of to wax. And so, um, yeah, so we're not feeling it as much, but um, yeah. So, yeah. So what are you, what other things are you seeing that people are doing um, kind of in the downtime and, and maybe getting their support staffs to help with? During this so, period. So yeah, just some wrap like wrapping up ideas, I guess. Uh one, uh sell your content. I mean, many people have been trying to repackage their um maybe their workshops or their classes or their paperwork package or some sort of online class or tool. Um normally, you know, that's a lot of investment of time to get that going. But once it's out there. You, you have it forever for marketing, for value add, for selling. So virtual assistant, I mean, I rely on ours for our social media and our, uh, they're helping create teachable courses. Uh, they have been doing um, blog posts, you know, writing blog posts to, to post on the uh, webpage, or you could, I suppose they could also sell them if you knew, if you had like a, a place to sell them. But uh, they've been doing a lot of uh, content creating, uh, fixing or strengthening our teaching and onboarding process that has also been something that's good because we know, I mean, I really do believe people, the services that therapists provide, people still need that. It's not going away. So when people do get adjusted to the new normal, there's either going to be an influx of for, for me, I'm going to probably need to hire more virtual assistants with, and uh, train the the our customers how to use them. So how do mm-hmm. I develop those resources now to help things in the future? And that's the same thing for all practices. You might have an HR policy that's out of date or you have to review your paperwork and it's not really clear. Mm-hmm. Uh, they can help you do those types of things to to make when when 
business and people adjust that your adjustment, you're going to just be able to move that much faster. Right, right. Yeah. And I love that idea because one of the things that um, as people get busier in their practices, um, one of the things that's so important to do is to have systems and processes in place to where things are more automated to where you're you're really just sick as a, as they say, to, right. everything runs like a well-oiled machine. And that is the one piece that you really have to have in order to do that is, is an assistant, virtual assistant that can, can help you bridge that gap. Because when we're first starting out in private practice, we've got a lot of time on our hands, but once you get busy and your practice starts getting full, um, that's really the time to start outsourcing and getting that, mm-hmm. those things um, off your plate. Right. So, yeah. And I guess the the last thing I would say is if you have to, if you do have to cut hours, don't stop because you're going to don't stop completely because there's a lot of momentum lost when you go from Z, you know, go from a hundred to zero and then go from zero back up. It's really hard to regenerate that momentum. So maybe you cut back a little bit, but, but keep doing your process, keep the routine, try to keep your current clients, um, keep, you know, paying, paying the running those insurance reports and verifying benefits, keep doing those things that have kept your business successful because if you have to start over again, and this would happen, how, how I, how this would happen in, in a normal world is uh, we, we sell hours to our clients and if they would run out like in the middle they w- of the month or at the, the last week of the month, they would be like, oh, don't do anything for a week. But when the virtual assistant came back, they had like mm-hmm. like half a month's worth of work piled up in that one week somehow. Yeah. And that it took it, it took even more hours to dig out from starting over again, mm-hmm. just refiguring out emails. You, you're shaking your head, Lorinda. Well, I just know, like, even over the weekend, like, when I'm <laughs> off and I come back, there's, like, yeah. you know, there's lots of messages, there's lots of emails you got to go through. And that's one thing that a virtual assistant can do, too, is, like, feed through those mm-hmm. junk mails and, and junk phone calls that you get from salespeople, but, like, filter it for you, too, right. to, you know, because your time's valuable, so... But yeah, I definitely have noticed yeah, that. If you stop, <laughs> if you stop completely, it's much harder to to restart. So keep some of the momentum going. Right, right. Yeah, it's um you know, you know the thing about it is is that uh, like it or not, the administrative side of running a practice is is constant in that we've always got um documentation to do, there's going to be intakes that we need to do or just all of those things. And really, for therapists that are in private practice, their time is spent best spent in the therapy room with clients right. because that's what that's what brings in the income. And so, any time that they're spending, you know, having to chase down an insurance claim or try to play phone tag with somebody uh, to schedule an appointment, those kinds of things, that is just. Um, it's money lost, really. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you could be paying someone to do those things, and it keep it keep moving. And I like I like that uh, that point that you make. Just about don't let it drop off. You've got right. to keep that momentum going, especially if it's you know even if it's slower, right? A slower momentum. So. Well, uh, James and Lorinda, what uh, other parting thoughts do you guys have? And just thinking about all of these things that you're, you've been noticing on your end with helping people. Just don't forget, uh, even though things are, um, uh, ha- have changed, we're, we're still doing pretty much the same thing. It's just the pieces on the board are rearranged and we have to figure out the puzzle and, um, you know, I, I feel blessed that I still have work. Um, I know our assistants do, and a lot of our therapists, uh, while things are harder, you know, are different. I guess it's different. Uh, mm-hmm. That they are, they feel, you know, like they're doing good work, and they're blessed uh, to have this work um, to do. Um, I think just remember that people 
you know, people will come back. People are going to need therapy work. They are going to need somebody to decompress after this situation. Um, and it, while it looks different, we're, you're still doing the the good work of helping people and healing people. Right. Right. Yeah, I like that idea. So we're still helping people. And I've also looked at it like being a virtual assistant, like you're partnering. Like right. I look at it as a partnership uh, mm-hmm. with, with my therapist that I work with and, you know, we're, I'm part of a team and, you know, if you look at it that way, then I think it keeps, um, even when you're slow, then you can kind of work through those, those slow times and figure it out together, um, right. to keep your business growing, the therapist right. business growing. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, that right now for those people that are, when things are slowing down, that is like, we've just been doing in our homes. We rearrange the closets. We, you know, get, get <laughs> yeah. rid of stuff. And we painted a bathroom. All, yeah. That's what we, we painted a bathroom. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. And so I think we do the same thing with our businesses and with yeah. our practices is that mm-hmm. we, we really kind of rearrange things and, and, and get them re- running smoothly. So, well, James and, Lorinda, I know that um, you guys also have, um, I think, a, a, a resource for people. And sure. we're going to have the links to that in our show summary. Tell folks a little bit about that. Sure. So I tried to provide a lot of things for your uh, listeners. Uh, the The Teachable course on generating revenue is uh, up there for free. There's a Facebook group that we're starting for uh, leading your superstar virtual assistant. So that's going to be there if you have questions or you want to hire a virtual assistant or you are working with a virtual assistant, you can join that group and talk with other um, like-minded people. Uh, We have, uh, if you wanted to subscribe to our virtual assistant services, there's no uh, setup fee. Normally there's a $100 or $99 fee for the setup uh, that's going to be waived for this, uh, this month or for the listeners just mention Gordon. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> when yeah. you uh, sign up. Um, and there's probably a few other things there on the resource page, um, but uh, those are the highlights. Okay. That's great. And again, we'll have all these links in the show notes and that sort of thing. So, well, Lorinda and James, I'm so glad that you rejoined the podcast and uh, I'm sure we'll be having other um, conversations in the future, but I think um yeah, one of one of the things that I've learned over and over again is the importance of of outsourcing and being able to delegate things that really are not necessarily a great use of my time, but end up eating up a lot of my time. I think a lot of times a mistake that we make, just a mindset thing, is that we think we can only we can do it best. Uh, but what we've learned, what I've learned is, is that handing it off to somebody else. Um, takes so much pressure off of me and my to-do list is much shorter and I don't feel like I'm having to uh, think about things that somebody else can handle for us. So, yeah. Yeah, So Absolutely. Okay. So thank you guys. It's great to talk to you again. Thanks, Gordon. Thanks, Gordon. I'm so grateful to James and Lorenda for joining me on this episode. Um, yeah, they, I think they give you, hopefully have given you a lot to think about and just our conversation around outsourcing and using other people to do a lot of the stuff that you might be doing yourself that really you're probably going to be better served by outsourcing. And, um, just also just thinking about, um, the return on the, your investment of doing those things. Uh, I think one of the things that uh, you've heard from me before talk about, and that is just our money mindset. And I think one of the things that people will tend to do is they think that uh, by saving money, by doing things themselves, um, it's going to get them ahead. But a lot of times, uh, it's better, much better to just invest in something so that you can get that return on that investment. Um, again, it's a lesson that I'm learning over and over again in my practice and really learning how to delegate better and hand things off, uh, you know, primarily things that I don't enjoy doing, things that um, 
I'm not good at doing and being able to hand those off to somebody that can do them much better than I can. And um, I think another point that they made uh, that James and Lorinda made is, um, you know, one of the things that happens for private practices is that um, they can lose potential clients because they're not getting phone calls returned quickly enough. Um, people will just start calling uh, calling therapists or counselors to see who they can get in with the quickest. And so by having someone available to return calls and be there just to answer the phone is a huge a huge thing and is uh, absolutely worth what you would spend on doing something like that. So hopefully this has given you a lot of food for thought just around um, being able to outsource and use a virtual assistant. So, so I'm glad you again, glad you joined me for the podcast. Um, do take time to subscribe to the podcast, wherever you might be listening to it, whether it be on Apple Podcasts or Google Play or Google Podcasts or Stitcher or Spotify. You know, I'm starting to listen to a lot more podcasts on Spotify here lately, just as a side note. But the practice of therapy is found on Spotify. So you can um, be sure to subscribe to us there and leave us a review. Um, Click on the stars or uh, write a review. That would just only help us Uh, make it easier for other people to find us and uh, hopefully benefit from the resources and information we're doing here on the podcast. Um, Check out the session note helper that I mentioned um, at the beginning. Um, And you can get to that by just going to sessionnotehelper.com or you can go to practiceoftherapy.com slash session note helper and find out more about that tool that I've put together just to help you kind of streamline your progress note or your session note writing. Um, the other thing I would like for you to do is check out our sponsor for the podcast, and that's Therapy Notes. And you can get to them at therapynotes.com. Uh, they are the number one electronic health record system um, out there for mental health providers. And if you use that coupon code Gordon, just G-O-R-D-O-N, you can get two two months of their services for free uh, just by checking them out. And um, they're who I use in my practice. I use them in conjunction with, uh, I use, well, I use the Session Note Helper in conjunction with Therapy Notes, and it works beautifully. So anyway, just wanted to let you know about that. So take care, folks. Have a, do have a good rest of your week and weekend, whenever you might be listening to this and stay healthy and safe, wash your hands, wear your masks. uh, And we're going to get through this, uh, this time we're in together. Uh, So take care, folks. Glad you're with me. been listening to the practice of therapy podcast with gordon brewer please visit us at practiceoftherapy.com for more information resources and tools to help you in starting building and growing your private practice and if you haven't done so already please sign up to receive the free private practice startup guide at practiceoftherapy.com The information in this podcast is intended to be accurate and authoritative concerning the subject matter covered. It is given with the understanding that neither the hosts, guests, or producers are rendering legal, accounting, or clinical advice. If you need a professional, you should find the right person for that.